Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Bear Ice. Ah, I'm excited. Finally, the Grand Prix season is here. Kicking off with Skate America this Friday, October 22nd through the 24th. The women will be competing in the short program on Saturday the 23rd. I'm going to take a look at the big names competing at this event, where they are coming into this Grand Prix season opener, and what we can expect to see from them. There are three skaters at this event competing for Japan. I'm going to take a look at two of them, Kari Sakamoto and Satoko Miyahara. Now, we just saw Kari Sakamoto last week at Asian Open, where she came in second. She underperformed a little bit, which is a little disappointing, but it wasn't a terrible outing for her. Coming into this competition, it's very clear she has a lot of work to do if she's hoping to get on the podium. Last season was rough for most people, but she did pretty well at her events. She skated at NHK and won 229 plus points. That's a really big score. And then she also had a really good showing at Japan Nationals where she came in second with again, another 222 plus score. So we know that is her ceiling. She can get around 225 to 230 points, which is a good score to get you on a podium. Now, at Asian Open, that was not the case. She was all the way down 202, which is a solid score, but not what you need if you're actually trying to get on a podium. The good thing is when she's on, she scores really well. Not as high in PCS as she deserves. I honestly think she probably has the best skating skills in the field or very close to the best skating skills in the field, and she doesn't really get a lot of respect in that right in terms of her component scores, but... Her jumps are massive, she covers the ice quickly, her spins are solid, and her programs are fairly decent, though, as I said in my last video, I'm really not feeling her free skate that much. But she can put up a good score if she skates well. She's got to get her head in the game if she wants a spot at the final, and that's a big deal and something she should be aiming for, especially going into an Olympic season. There are only literally two or three skaters who have any shot at disrupting the Russians sweeping every single podium at every single event this year, and Kari is one of those people. So hopefully she can get herself together, come out, and put up a really good performance. Also competing for Japan is Satoko Miyahara. I am obsessed with her. I'll just, I'll put that out there. Yes, her jumps are barely there, but every single thing that she does with the exception of the jumps, is just perfection. She is the most artistic, best presented skater out there. Fight me, I don't care. Like, she is beautiful, but she's hanging on by a thread right now. She's been trending downward, I'd say, since the 2019-2020 season, but she's still top five in Japan, which is a good thing. She had a devastating placement at Worlds this past year, coming in 19th. And she was only third at nationals, which is just not enough. We've seen her at Japan Open. The jumps are still looking super iffy. I know she had switched coaches and went to Lee Barkell. I don't know if she's still with him, but whatever was going on, her jumps have just been hanging on by a thread. I absolutely love the short program that she's doing, Song for a Little Sparrow. I think it is a masterpiece. Her free skate is to Tosca, and it's nice. Judging by her performance at Japan Open, she still has a long way to go because it's hard to appreciate all of the beauty that is the tiny goddess. Yeah, we used to call her Tiny Queen. She's Tiny Goddess now. It is hard to appreciate all the beauty of the tiny goddess when she is falling and stumbling out of jumps and all that other kind of stuff. We saw her actually attempt a triple axel at Japan Open. It wasn't really close. Honestly, don't really know what to expect for her. I'm hoping she can go out and at least have a roughly clean skate because based on her PCS, that will keep her in the top five or six. After what happened at Worlds last year and then what we saw at Japan Open, I don't really know what all she's going to be able to do, but she is a fighter and she has always been a really good competitor. So I'm hoping she can pull through and at least have two skates that she can be proud of. There are also three skaters here from Russia. We're going to focus on the headliner, Alexander Trusova, and also Daria Usasheva. Alexander Trusova, definitely the one a lot of people are watching this season. We all know her backstory. She started off with Itiri's group. 
She left at the end of the 2019-2020 season and went to Evgeny Plashenko. I thought it was a great move for her. Under him, her quads definitely improved. I feel like her air position is better. She's tighter in the air. Her landings are more secure. I think it really helped. At the end of Worlds earlier this year, after finishing third, she left Plashenko and came back to Atiri's group. I honestly think she ended up getting the best of both worlds. So she got the technical lessons she needed from Plashenko, and now she gets kind of the clout of Atiri behind her by coming back to the group. But I'm giving all credit to her for working really hard and also to Atiri's group because I'm really liking what I'm seeing from Sasha so far this season. Her short program is really great. I think she might have the best short program of all of the Russian ladies, which is saying a lot. Her short program is really forcing her to do more than just skate and jump, and I am completely here for it. In the short program, the jumps don't seem to be an issue except for the triple axle, which she is adding in this season. She's capable of one, and when she lands it, it's gorgeous, but there seems to be a bit of a mental block with her when it comes to landing it in competition. If she goes for it, eventually she will land it. But in the interim, while she's falling on it, it's going to hurt her short program score a little bit. Her Cruella free skate is pretty good. It's a decent concept and it fits. There's not a ton of choreography in it, but there are enough choreographic moments in it where if she takes the time to give it that little extra oomph, she can make it shine and make me forget that most of her program is set up for quads. That's all you have to do. I am not hard to please. Just give me a little bit of performance. It goes a long way. During the Russian test skates, she went out and landed five quads in her free skate. It just was amazing. She went to the US Classic and could not replicate that performance, only landing three quads. She had a good score overall, but only 216 points, which is very beatable by a number of her teammates, as well as some of the people not from Russia. Sasha is the overwhelming favorite to win here, but she is going to have to deliver at least a little bit, otherwise she will leave the door open. Also competing for Russia is Daria Usesheva. Now, she doesn't have the same firepower as a Trusova in terms of a quad or a triple axle, but she does have a full arsenal of triple jumps along with triple triples, really nice spins, pretty programs, and of course, a teary clout behind her. That is worth a lot, let's just be honest. She competed internationally on the Junior Grand Prix where she placed third at the final she was second at Junior Worlds, and she is currently the fourth place finisher at Nationals. So she's definitely got the goods to come here and make a mark. I feel like she's actually a really good top four bet. She's very consistent, I believe, and I think that could go a long way, especially with some of the skaters in this field being a little iffy in terms of what they're going to deliver. If she can go out and nail her programs, I'm thinking Daria has a really good shot at getting onto that podium. Those are the main competitors of this event, but there are a couple of other notable people competing this weekend. Yu Young of Korea. She had a great debut back in 2019-2020. She has the triple axles. She does one in the short and two in the free skate. She has huge jumps, really nice skating skills. Her programs are nice, but kind of safe. If she can hit the triple axles, She's going to put pressure on everyone and could very well land on the podium. Also from Korea, we have Yi Lim Kim. She had a really great short program at Worlds earlier this year. She finished top five. Unfortunately, she couldn't hang on to it and drop down to 11th. She's similar to Yu Young in that she has nice jumps and pretty but safe programs. In order for her to stand out, she will need to be clean, but she'll also need to bring a little something extra to her programs. The American headliner of the event was supposed to be Brady Tunnell, but unfortunately, she had to withdraw due to an injury. With Brady out, that leaves Amber Glenn as the top American competitor at this event. Amber had a really good showing at Nationals this year. She landed on the podium in second place. The only problem with Amber is she has always struggled with consistency, and she's not been a reliable skater. This is her chance to prove that she has what it takes to be one of the go-to girls for the United States. 
I don't expect her to meddle here, but if she can put out two strong programs, that's going to be what she needs to do to strengthen her case for one of those three spots to Beijing. Also competing, we have Johanna Yokoi of Japan, Ekaterina Karakova of Poland, Senia Sinitsina of Russia, and Audrey Shin and Star Andrews for the United States. So those are the competitors we'll see this year at Skate America. I'm pretty sure Sasha's going to win this one, but I do not want to say it because I'm really bad at predictions. Let me know who you think is going to be on the podium down below in the comments. As always, thanks so much for watching this video. Please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and be sure to check back soon. Bye!